Now we move on to the third and final way to share the content within our application. We've already covered the ability to share it to Twitter, emailing, and now SMS direct text messaging. So sending it via SMS works very similar to emailing, more so than it actually does to Twitter. And the reason for that is because we use the same framework with SMS with what we do with emailing. So there's no need to import any special frameworks. We already have one already set up. So if I scroll to the very top of our end view controller, we imported our message UI framework, uh, which we used to, again for our in-app emailing. SMS work uses the exact same one, and it's almost the exact same configuration when it comes down to the code. All we're really changing is just simply one or two pieces of text within the code. So before we go any further then, we're gonna jump into our main.storyboard and then create the final action within our end view by bringing up our assistant editor. Now scroll down all the way to the bottom and space it out so we can then clearly select our share SMS button. Now right click or control click and drag that over and drop that in. Make sure it's selected as an action and I'm simply gonna call this share SMS and then add that into our project. So now we've got the action and the newly function all created and linked up to our button, we can then return to our assistant editor, or our standard editor, should I say. There we go. And then jump in to our end view controller. Now, if you're going to be adding in SMS messaging instead of emailing, you don't want emailing whatsoever, always make sure that one, you've imported the message UI framework into the class you want to use it. And just like how we added in our MF Mail Compose View Controller Delicate, we now need to add in an additional one, but this one's a little bit different. This one's going to be our MF, instead of Mail, we want our Message Compose View Controller Delicate. So you can kind of see the differences now between the two of them. We have our Mail one, and then we have our message. Now straight away this is going to bring up a warning because we need to create the functions that read for this delicate. So we'll come on to that in just a moment. So let's scroll down all the way to the bottom now where we have our kind of a SMS button all set up and our space out so we can clearly see what we're typing. Again, it's going to be almost mirror imaging what we've done for the sharing via email because it's the same function, it requires the same uh, framework, it's almost the same capability. The only thing we're really changing what it equals to is rather than MF Mail Composer here, here, and here, uh, we're going to be changing that to MF Message. And then that also does change a few of the configurations down below. But overall, it's the pretty much the same method. So let's jump straight into it then. So the first one we need to check is if our user's device has the capabilities to send SMS messaging. Now where this differs to emailing, where almost all devices can do it, it just requires a simple email account to be logged in, not all devices can send SMS messaging. Obviously newer devices now can do this, but such older devices, uh, which I believe maybe the first iPad and uh, quite a few iPods didn't have the messaged ability, um, so, you know, before the integration of iMessage. So we always need to make sure that we take care of the devices uh, that don't have the capability. As a developer, we need to cover all aspects of every action that we create. So we first need to check if we can send a text message. If we can, great, let's perform the action. So we do this by typing out our if statement. So if our MF message compose view controller, there we go, dot can send text, then, then we perform what we place inside of these two brackets. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our message, the view that loads up, just like how we do with the email, and then pre-populate it with certain information. So we first need to create our constant, and we're going to simply call it message. And I'm going to link that now to our MF message compose view controller. And again, equal that to our MF message compose view controller once more with our two brackets at the end. So now when I reference the um, constant above, where we've got the warning on, of message, we then have a different bunch of attributes that we can then go on to edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually get our message and do dot message compose delicate and equal that to itself. There we go. So by doing that, it allows us then to read different types of functions as we progress further on through this um, kind of section. So the function that we're going to be talking about is 
the ability to dismiss the view once we've configured an action. So whether that be we've sent the SMS message or we've cancelled it, pretty much again similar to what we created as a function just up above for our mail um, compose view controller. But we'll get on to that in just a second. We've got it in already, so it's already kind of linked to itself before we load it up within the view. So we're going to first then configure our first attribute of our message view. So we do message dot, and we're going to send it to our recipient. So who are we going to be sending this to? So we don't really know who our users are going to be sending uh, these SMS messages to. We don't have a list of all their friends, family, or anything like that. So we basically want to leave this field completely blank. So we equal this to nil. So again, just like how we did the receptants in mail, just a slight different configuration. Next, we move on to our second one, and the only additional one of this is our dot body. And again, we equal this also to a string, for example. So the body is the actual message we're going to be sending to our receptor. And it's going to be basically pretty much what we've set up in our previous Twitter and our emailing. We can create our string, and it'll be my final score was colon. And then we need to add in the text that gets displayed within our score label. And how we added in a piece of text within a string to place it within another string is do a backslash and two brackets. And then in the name of the actual object or the outlet that we gave it, so score label dot text, and we add in our exclamation mark for optional wrap to convert it all over. And that's pretty much it. We've now kind of um, got the message view, we've pre-populated it, and all we need to do now is show it to our user ready for them to send. So what we do down below then is we do self.present to our view controller, and what we're going to be presenting is our message constant that we created. Animated, we're going to select to true and completion, we're going to leave that on nil. And there we go. That is all we need to do to get the ability to kind of pre-populate a message view or a text message ready for our user to send. But as it stands, there is still a warning within our project. And that's to do with the delegate that we added just above. So you can see here this whole function that we've now added in. I'll close this up a little bit there. We're now going to go on to add in an additional function. And it's pretty much the same kind of function we created, like I said before, for our mail compose controller. The ability to, whatever happens when our user gets to send a text message, we have to manually dismiss it from the view. So if they chose to send it, maybe they chose to cancel it, or maybe the actual message compose view controller actually crashed. Whatever happens, we need to make sure that that view always gets dismissed so a user is not stuck in that view and then can return to the application. So what we need to type in then is our message compose view controller with did finishing uh, with results. So once we got that up here, the only action that we need to give it is the ability to dismiss. So again, very similar to what we did before, uh, the exact same way to how we normally dismiss views within applications. We do self.dismiss, animated, we select to true, completion, we select to nil, and we end that with a bracket. Now, this is all swaying towards if our device has the ability, again, to send SMS messaging. So stuff like the simulator and maybe older devices don't have this ability. So what do we do if the device doesn't have the ability to send SMS messages? Well, the same way we did with Twitter and emailing, we're going to display a simple alert. So this whole function here is basically working on the principle that it can send text or it can send a text message. So if it can, do all this. Else, if it can't, do what we place within these two brackets. And again, we're just going to set up a simple alert. So this alert's going to be a little bit different. It's not like the other ones where Twitter and emailing, we had to make sure if they were signed in with their account. This one is just completely, you either have the ability or you don't have the ability. So we're going to word the alert a little bit different. So we create our alert like normal, and we equal it to our UI alert controller. And then we're going to give it its very own title, message, and preferred style. So the title is going to be simply warning. I mean, it, it sounds quite scary, but warning. We'll type in, uh, this device cannot send SMS messages. So that's the only 
kind of message we're going to be displaying because that's the only alternative to we can send a message is it can't we don't need to be logged into account you don't need to have a sim card or a phone number or anything like that because we have emails and like you know iMessaging it's either you have the ability to send it or you kind of don't have the ability so preferred style we're going to leave that down to our UI alert controller style which is just there dot alert because we obviously we want this alert to be an alert and not the other alternative to an action sheet so let's scroll down a little bit more now so we can actually see what we're typing. And then we need to add the kind of almost considering it as a done button, a button that we press to dismiss the alert. So we type in alert and we do simply dot add action. And the action that we're going to be adding is our UI alert action. There we go. We do our bracket for our title, our string style and handler. So our title, as always, I'm going to put in OK. Style, we're going to leave that simply our UI action uh, style, which is just there, dot default. And then our handler, we're going to simply leave it to nil. Now, if I remember correct, um, correctly, and I failed to do this on the previous two lectures, is we've got to place in a bracket on the end. I don't know why it doesn't auto manually add it itself. We've got to always add it. It always stumbles me on that. But I've kind of learnt my lesson there. So then once we've done all that, we can then finally present it to our user. So what are we presenting? Our alert animated, we can select true, completion, we do know, and that with a bracket. So that covers all aspects then. If the ability to send a text message exists, then it's gonna obviously trigger this whole function here. Else, if that ability don't exist, we're gonna display an alert to our user. Now, before we test it out to see how it exactly works and then how I'm going to do that is build and run it on my own device and mirror the, the screen so we can basically see it now, I'm actually going to build and run and test it on this simulator. Just to show you that for a device that doesn't have the capabilities uh, to make sure that alert does appear before you, we show you uh, the, the proper way on how we can actually send an SMS message. So we're going to start the game then, and uh, once it builds and runs, we're going to get a little bit of score. I mean, it makes no difference because on the simulator, we don't have the capability to send an SMS message. This again is only due for to, you know, due to to be a simulator. So once it's finished, I press share SMS, and we can't do it. Warning: this device cannot send SMS messages. Press OK, and it's completely dismissed. Perfect. That's exactly what I want it to do. So now let me get it all set up on my device. We're going to go to build and run, and we're going to see how it works when we actually can send SMS messages. So you can now see my device's screen is being mirrored, and we're going to start our game, and let's see if I can beat my original high score. So let's see if I can get into the at least a low 100s. Let's see if it's possible. I have a good feeling about this, if I can beat my old score. So already you can see quite how addicted the game is. I got 109. I mean, that's a pretty respectable score. So now it's all done, I can then share this via SMS. And when I do press it, it then loads up the SMS view as if I'm going to send a text message. You can see the message body is now filled with my final score was 109. We've got the keyboard to type. And at the very top here, we have two. I can then either add in a phone number or I can press the plus symbol on the right hand side and then select one of the many contacts uh, from our phone book. And if we either choose to send it or we choose to cancel it, no matter what happens, it will always dismiss and go back to our application. And there we go. We now have all three abilities to share the content with an application via Twitter, email, and SMS. So, how cool is that? I mean, it's, it's almost like free promotion when you give your users the ability to share your content. So you always got to think about really cool ways and how we can add more functionality to our application. So in the next coming lectures, then we're going to be focusing on the ability to add in advertisements and how we can start to earn revenue from within our application.